We're here today with Vin Singh, the founder and CEO of Bullfrog AI, stock symbol BFRG. Welcome to sunny Florida. Welcome to the studio, Vin. Thanks, Todd. Great to be here. I really want to congratulate you. You had a, an IPO recently, NASDAQ listing, and um, that's always a very exciting time. Yeah, it's a great moment, a milestone for our company, and we're uh, excited about the future. AI is one of the hottest things going right now. It's all over the news. Uh, I guess since Ch Chat GPT came out, it's really been getting a lot of juice. Why don't you tell us a little history about your AI? So our AI uh, comes from the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab, and that's one of the top institutions in the world. E extremely innovative. They work on uh, lots of amazing technologies. Uh, they spent you know, a lot of time and money developing this AI platform. It's actually won awards there for innovation of the year. Um, and it has an amazing ability to predict targets of interest in large, complex data sets. It's, uh, you know, in some ways, it's similar to what ChatGPT is. ChatGPT is what you call generative AI. And that means you're generating new content from existing content. So when you hear stories about chat GPT being used to create, you know, a new article or, or you know, write a book, publish a book. Um, in our technology, it's a similar approach. We take data, clinical data, real world data, and we're able to generate new data, which are relational databases or relational networks. So we, we, take, we take that existing data, create these networks, and we can show relationships that were previously unknown. And from there, we can get insights and uh, do the amazing things that we're looking to do with the drug development process. The Johns Hopkins University is clearly um, an amazing partner to have in medical breakthroughs, and obviously the APL is doing all types of things. Maybe, how did, how did you get involved with them to begin with? That's just a little history. I had a, a relationship with Johns Hopkins. Um, I actually you know, did my MBA there. Okay. Um, you know, and then learned about uh, APL, which is a uh, subsidiary of Johns Hopkins. And, uh, you know, I, you know, the reason I even started the company was I was looking for a tool that could help improve the odds of success in late stage clinical development. Because, um, as you may or may not know, the you know, uh, big pharma fails about 50% of the time in phase three. Wow. And I thought, wow, that's a really big number. And for oncology and cardiovascular and CNS, that number is even higher. So, um, it, you know, it just so happens that uh, APL had a solution, um, and we were able to get uh, you know, worldwide exclusive rights to that solution for drug development applications. Wow, that's an amazing feat for a relatively small company. I know you've only got about a little under six million shares outstanding. So, very exciting time for you guys. You've got a couple of drugs already in the pipeline. In fact, one came out of the Johns Hopkins uh, University. Uh, one of the programs already has some clinical data. Why don't you just give us a breakdown of your drug pipeline? We do have a uh, drug for glioblastoma, uh, which is a very aggressive type of brain cancer. Um, Johns Hopkins uh, took the drug through a phase one trial. Um, and it was successful, you know, really looking for safety, but, uh, you know, there were hints of, of other, uh, you know, possibilities as well. Um, and uh, this was in uh, uh, newly diagnosed uh, patients with, with glioblastoma. Uh, it was also tested on pediatrics, um, pediatric patients as well. We've, uh, so that was a phase one. Uh, we also have another drug, uh, also, uh, for glioblastoma from Johns Hopkins that's related to this first drug. So right now we're in the process of developing our strategy for how best to move forward with these two programs, right? Because we want to do what makes the most sense for our company and for patients, right? We want to be successful. Um, and we're going to be looking to partner uh, this program. And, uh, you know, we come to the table with the drug and our technology and the partner would come to the table with uh, resources and clinical experience. Uh, and our objective, like everything we do, is to advance this drug one stage and then uh, flip it to Big Pharma. Um, and that, so that's really what our business model is. 
The, the second program is a uh, discovery program uh, we recently announced with the uh, J. Craig Venter Institute. And that's where we are using our technology to uh, effectively uh, reprogram a herpes virus to attack colorectal cancer cells. So we're taking, basically taking the genome from a herpes virus and swapping out pieces of it to find the optimal combination so that these uh, herpes virus uh, particles actually go after a colorectal and attack the colorectal cancer cells without harming you know, healthy cells or having off-target effects. So that's a, a really exciting uh, discovery phase project. And again, our, our objective here is to uh, take this you know, program, advance it one stage, and then partner it. And uh, we're going to keep repeating that cycle. Sounds amazing. That sounds like something out of the born identity or something. So next, next level technology for sure. Could your AI, you know, what you think, make, give that program a better chance? How would that work? Well, absolutely. I mean, because, you know, th this is a very complicated problem that we're trying to solve. So when you have, uh, you know, very large data sets, complex data sets, and you're trying to make predictions, which is what we're doing here, we're trying to predict which combination of genes is going to allow you know, this, this reprogrammed herpes virus to do what it wanted to do, you need uh, a technology like AI, you know, machine learning, to achieve that. What do you think is causing all this fervor and excitement around AI in the market? Well, I think you know, AI is starting to mature. Um, you know, hearing about chat GPT and all the amazing applications, I mean, that's brought it to the consumer. You know, everybody can now get access to AI. And, um, you know, as we continue seeing success stories on uh, the value it can add, making people's lives easier, uh, more efficient, um, and that's no different in healthcare. Um, we're seeing AI being applied in, you know, drug discovery, imaging, uh, the things that we're doing, which are, you know, discovery all the way to clinical development. As we keep hearing success stories about AI, I think it, you know, people are getting more and more excited about it. And it's just proving itself to be a, a very valuable tool with tremendous potential. How do you think your algorithms might separate you apart from, you know, let's just say your traditional, uh, there's a lot of biotech AIs out there. Well, I'm glad you asked me that. We think that most AI companies in the healthcare biotech space are using open source algorithms. Our algorithms are proprietary. They were developed at the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab. And a paper was published where our algorithms went head to head against the other open source algorithms that are being used today, um, where uh, you know, about a dozen different data sets were analyzed. Our algorithms came out on top for speed and accuracy. So we know that we have something special that uh, appears to be better than what others are using today, and we think that gives us an advantage. And it's not something you see very often where a company is publishing head-to-head -head against the competition. Um, so I think you know, that's giving us a lot of confidence, a lot of optimism, and it's an objective proof point um, that you, know, you can't debate it. The data is there. APL has more than 6,000 engineers and scientists. Uh, they develop all kinds of amazing technologies related to national defense, you know, uh, space exploration, robotics, things like that. Our platform won Innovation of the Year at APL, um, and that's a big deal. So we're coming from real quality. You know, the core of our company is real quality. Vin, what is the, uh, why don't you bring it home for the audience today? What is the essential value proposition? Why should our audience consider investing in Bullfrog AI today? We are a tech-enabled drug development company. So we're an AI company applying our technology to the problems in drug development. Our value proposition is this. Drug development is a very long and expensive and high-risk project. Okay, you're talking about 10 to 15 years, one to two billion dollars. We believe we can increase the chances for success. And when we do that, it's going to impact the entire healthcare infrastructure. The pharmaceutical companies are going to win. Bullfrog is going to win. Patients are going to win because they're going to get access to drugs that work for them. 
Even insurance companies are going to win because half the drugs they reimburse for don't even work. The end result of all of that is very expensive therapies for all of us. We all take medications, or we're going to take them in the future, um, and, and we believe that um, the things that we're doing will ultimately make these uh, therapies more affordable for all of us. So this, what Bullfrog is doing, is ultimately going to touch all of us. Amazing stuff, Van. About a million and a half shares in the float, and uh, already the trading volume even today is exciting. The trend is your friend. It's starting to go. So I could certainly see some uh, very exciting times ahead for the investment community. And of course, it's always great to help patients and the healthcare system become more efficient, more precise. Really, I, I want to thank you for spending the time with us in Florida. I'm looking forward to our road show the next couple of days. And uh, thanks again for being with us, Vin. Thank you. Great to be here.